material monsters. A little angry material. That's, that's what we see nowadays. A bunch of little angry material monsters. But you know why you talking about my child like that? Because you have created an angry, materialistic little monster. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I, I see that. I see that. I go to my baby's school every Friday. Volunteer in the class. Get in there a month. A room full of little materialistic, angry little monsters. We made them little monsters. So don't think I'm just talking about them. I'm really talking about you. I'm talking about the monsters. Cause, cause you, cause monsters have to be created. That, the, that, that, that mindset that doesn't appreciate anything that's being done for them, we create that in them. That mindset that you owe me when I ain't done nothing worthy of giving what I'm trying to receive, we create that in them. We make them think that when we just give them things and give, because we, in our mind, we'll say, and I want my child to have a better life than I had. I want my child to have more than I had growing up. I want my child to be better off. And there's nothing wrong with them being better off. There's nothing wrong with them having more. But make sure that you instill the value in them that whatever they get, they got to give a portion of that to God because God is how you got it and God gave it to you so that they can enjoy it and if they don't show how thankful they are, they got to learn how to give something back to God that he gave to them through you. When we just give and give and give and don't require anything in return. Come on in the room. How can a child sit in a classroom for an entire school year come home at the last part of the year with all F's on the report card. Note down there at the bottom. They got to repeat the third grade. And they right here wearing $200 joy. Come on in the room. Something wrong when my baby got $200 on their feet. And they got two cents worth of cents in their hand. Something is wrong. If he got foo boo on his back and he don't know who who in his hand, something is wrong. We have created material monsters who will take something I bring home to them, snatch it out of my hand and run out to their room and close the door, lock the door, and start operating the gadget I just paid $400 for and ain't even had the nerve to tell me thank you. Yeah. Come on in the room. We sit back at home here. They appreciate it. They know they don't eat. No, they don't eat. My baby can't get nothing from there. What I say and thank you. Cause it was mine. Before I gave it to him. And Daddy has no problem taking it back. When you don't say thank you. You follow what I'm saying? Don't look at me like I'm obligated for your accessories. I'm obligated for your necessities. Come on in the rap.
Now, the Bible did not define what kind of clothes. So I am under no obligation at all to put no fubu on your boo-boo. Amen. Amen. <laughs> under no obligation at all to put no Air Jordans on your feet. That is an accessory and not a necessity. And if you allow a child that you have birthed into this world to get mad at you because you didn't stand in line at football to get them the brand new Jordans that just hit the market. If they upset with you and call themselves, gonna lock themselves up in their room, and if you make them come out the room, they don't talk to you. They sitting at the table with their jaws balled up and their arms folded, just cause you didn't stand that line and get them the new Jordans, and then they decide that you're the worst parent in the world, and I don't want to live here anymore, and call themselves gonna run away. Tell them, baby, you ain't got to run. <laughs> Hold on, I got a suitcase <laughs> that you can borrow and just give me the address when you want me to drop you. You ain't got to run nowhere. Cause if you that ungrateful, you don't deserve to stay up in here and breathe the air I provide for. God said, teacher, day in and day out. When's the last time? You sat down with that child and talked to them about how their day went. When's the last time you talked to them rather than at them? When's the last time you looked on the computer to see what kind of sites they're logging into? When's the last time you scrolled through the text messages on the phone that you provide and for the service that you allow them to have to see who they are texting? Who are they LOLing? Who are they BFFing? You better find out. Because that's, that's how I say that we have three sets of rules in the house. Children know how to divide the house. They can have their way with mama. They'll always run to mama. They know they can't have their way with daddy. They'll always find a way around them. Then mom and daddy either, why you let that child go with such and such? Well, I didn't see nothing wrong with that. They wanted to go, and, and, and everybody was going over there, and they were going to do just such and such. So he said, well, then, well, did you find out this? Well, well I didn't remember this. Well, did you find out this? Well, I didn't remember this. Well, did you find out this? You have two different rules. Daddy is watching out for us best if he's there. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. And sometimes mother's a little bit lean. Sometimes the tables are flipped. Sometimes mama is the stern one. Yeah, yeah. And daddy is just going to be <laughs> He got his own agenda. Daddy got something he trying to get to, so he don't want you to wear around when he's trying to get to whatever he's trying to get to, so he don't care where you go. Just go, just go, just go. <laughs> Three different set of rules. One house. Matthew chapter 6. Verse number 24. Jesus said, no man can serve two masters. Amen. You either love one and hate the other. Amen. Or either you hold to one and despise the other. You cannot have two sets of rules in that one house. The rules in that house have to be God rules. What God says has to go in that house. Amen. We need to get back to the time where when it was time to go to worship, Everybody left the house. Everybody left the house. Wasn't nobody in the house when it was time to go to worship because the whole house went to worship. If it was time for us to go to a gospel meeting in between worship, everybody went. The children didn't go over so-and-so's house while mommy and daddy went to the gospel meeting. The children didn't go run to the park with a friend of theirs on Sunday. If we